To put some context in all these stories, I'm going to start with the first memory that I have, the first true memory. And that's when I was six years old and my mom tried to kill me, herself, and my brothers. And right at this time, my dad and my mom separated. My mom's working at a bar in the ghetto six days a week. My dad's making $5,000 a week, not giving us anything, letting us live in, in the government housing projects in Philadelphia. We're collecting welfare, getting free butter and cheese from the government. It was a rough time for my mom. Psychologically, mentally, physically, spiritually. And my dad had his own addictions, gambling. And I don't know what happened, but my dad and my mom separated. And my mom lost it. She lost it mentally. And she was giving up. And in her moments of pain, <clears throat> And in her moments of pain and weakness, she decided she was going to kill herself with me and my two brothers. And my mom decided to cut the gas to the stove. In the housing projects, we had gas-fed heat and gas-fed stove. So she cut the pipe to the stove so the whole house is filling up with gas. And my brothers found out, and he came back upstairs and told us what, what mom was doing, that she was downstairs smoking a cigarette, waiting for the house to blow up. So my brothers came up with a plan. My oldest brother was going to hold me. Now our steps, when you walk down the steps, it's metal steps, and there's the door right to the left at the bottom of the steps, which is also metal. Now we're in the projects, so there's four locks. And the plan was for me, my brother to hold me, run down the steps, get out, and then my other brother was going to follow us later. And so my oldest brother had me in front, we ran down the steps, trying to unlock all the four locks. And my mom jumped up from the couch and started beating us both up throwing punches, more punches than Mike Tyson knockout. And she pushed my brother out the door. My brother ended up getting the door open. She pushed my brother out, but kept me inside and locked the door again. I ran back upstairs. Now I'm with my other brother. We tried to do the same plan again. Ran down, tried to open up the door. My mom once again came over, beat us both, threw punches, pushed my other brother out, kept me inside. Now it's just me and my mom. And my mom puts me on the couch next door. And she puts a blanket over my head. And it was my grandmom's blanket that she made it for me, knitted it because I was always going to work with my mom. We would get home at three in the morning in the freezing cold in the winters of Philadelphia. So this blanket was made for me and she puts it over my head. She wasn't trying to suffocate me. She was just trying to shield me from what was gonna happen. And my mom's still smoking a cigarette. And I remember seeing Channel 6 News, Jim Gardner. I remember watching it through the little hole in the blanket. And <clears throat> I remember crying. I remember crying really hard. Not because I was afraid to die. I knew what my mom was doing. I was crying because I didn't want I didn't want my mom to be hurt. I didn't want I didn't want anything to happen to my mom. I love my mom. And I was praying to God. And I was praying really, really hard that nothing would happen to my mom. I just, 
I didn't want my mom to be hurt. I didn't care about myself. I just didn't want my mom to be hurt. And the police were banging on the door. And they were banging from the back door and the front door. But in the projects, you can't, you can't. These doors are metal. It's the projects. It's the housing projects. There's no way you're kicking this door in. You'd have to drive a truck through these doors. And as they were banging, they were saying, let us have the kid. Let us have the kid. And in that moment, my mom changed her mind. She was no longer going to kill us both. She just wanted to kill herself and let me live. And she tried to open up the door to push me out so she can stay in the house and finish what she started to do. And luckily, thank God, when she opened up the door, the police rushed in, threw me on the ground, and they rushed in and arrested my mom. And I remember sitting in my aunt's car with my two brothers a half a block away and watching my mom being led in handcuffs to the police van. And that moment seeing my mom in handcuffs was, was a horrible sight. <laughs> it isn't funny. But when she got in the van, she had such strength that night. And it was the strength of the demons. It was the strength of the demons. Demons took her over. Because she rocked this van back and forth so much that I actually thought the van was going to tip over. Now, my mom's only 5'3", five 5'4", foot five foot maybe 120 pounds. But she had such incredible strength. And I remember crying, you know, hugging my brothers. My mom went to the hospital. And at that point, I lived with my dad. And I'd never lived with my dad before. My mom was in the hospital for two weeks. When my mom got out of the hospital, my dad sent me back to live with my mom two weeks after she tried to kill us and kill me. Now, my mom wasn't better. She was still sick. You don't get better in two weeks from trying to kill yourself. We went to therapy, but my dad had his own addictions. My dad was addicted to women and gambling, so I was interfering with his life. And he didn't want that. So he sent me back with my mom. We went to counseling for a few months. And I, I, I remember in counseling, I knew what to tell these counselors. You know, they... Most counselors care, but they have, especially the government counselors, they have so many people they have to help. You know, it, you just become like another number. And that's what I felt. So I knew what to tell them. And we never talked about it. You know, I never was in a counseling session with my mom. We never talked about it. My mom never apologized. My mom never said sorry. Never comforting me, never never consoled me, never never gave me any love or, you know, a moment of talking or a moment of, you know, hugs and saying sorry. None of that ever happened. So that that was a big trauma. It fucked me up in life. And later on I, I faced it and beat it, but that was pretty much my first memory.